enforcement will really depend on us being politically acceptable on, on, on all sides, and that takes a lot of work. I'm trying to organize at least a, a, a major workshop of the country's leading constitutional thinkers uh, and of the major parties on this in, in this year. So uh, uh, stay, stay tuned. Uh, and this isn't the only, I've talked about dissolution. I've talked about uh, prorogation. But there are other matters in our functioning of our parliamentary democracy uh, where things are far from clear. Uh, but one of them, I've already touched on, uh, what about parliamentary privilege? Uh, if you read the books on parliamentary privilege, it is a privilege of parliament to ask for papers and to get them. Uh, if you read the history of World War II in our country and in the United Kingdom, you'll find parliamentary committees uh, had access to talk about uh, documents uh, crucial to the security of the country to very important documents and, and officials. There were some things in the area of intelligence on code breaking and so on that they didn't see, they didn't ask for, enough sense not to ask for that. But the idea that you can only trust the Crown and, it, and its prime ministerial advisors, but you can't trust the people who we have elected uh, I don't think is on in a democracy. Uh, that's getting us back to a monarchy, uh, a kind of, kind of, a kind of elected monarchy. Because remember, this particular monarch and his PMO advisors, uh, they don't have a majority either in the country or even in Parliament. And to say that they can't trust um, the, the majority in Parliament, uh, I don't think it's acceptable. Uh, I think we, we, uh, we really have to look at how committees in the parliaments of the world have handled national security issues. We have a very strong record of how we've handled it. Uh, and I think that's that's very serious business uh, to be looked at. I, asking Mr. Uh, Justice Frank Iacobucci, a very good friend of mine, to go through and look at the what's being edited out and decide, tell us. Uh, whether or not it's uh, national security. He's kind of saying, we can trust good old Frank. Uh, and he's, I trust Frank, but I also trust the people we've elected. Uh, I'll just give you one more example. When I was uh, director of research for the Royal Commission on Security Intelligence, the one that looked into all the dirty tricks against the FLQ, uh, I, I have access to a lot of uh, documents, but I was just so impressed uh, by the committees of Congress, uh, both in the Senate, the Intelligence Committee, so the House of Representatives and Congress, uh, who uh, have all kinds of national security uh, clearance to look at documents uh, that are vital to the national security of the United States. And to say we can't do it because our allies would be pissed off, that's the current story, is to say we're the only country uh, whose parliamentarians are such a bad lot that we can't trust them uh, to be uh, you know, careful about the security of this country. So that's a serious problem. Another one, I, don't, I can't go through them all, are confidence votes. We're supposed to know that the government of the day has lost uh, the confidence of Parliament and loses a confidence vote. But my friends, do you think there's a clear statement, a clear agreement among the parties, and so it's even within the parties, on what constitutes a vote of no confidence? And, and, and who can create uh, a situation where matter is a vote of confidence? Uh, that's far uh, from clear. And there are other matters. So our fundamentals are not are very, very shaky. And here we are with New Zealand, Australia, United Kingdom, our three main uh, countries we should be looking at. They all have been working on this. And our political leaders, I haven't got anywhere with the Liberals, a little way away with the NDP. But the liberals and the conservatives say, they listen to me, and they say, oh, yeah, mm -hmm. and they just don't do a damn thing. Uh, our governor general and, and, and is, is, is in a very, very difficult position, as are those who are, are advising. So uh, we've got some real work to do. Uh, I'll, I'll run out of time. I'll come back to fixed election day. But those are fundamental. That's, to me, the urgent problem, is to address that shakiness uh, on constitutional conventions and to begin to do it as soon as possible. There are some structural changes in our parliamentary democracy which I think are on your mind. The two that I hear of most often 
our Senate reform and electoral reform. I'm near the end of my time. We can talk about them. I want, I'm not a fan of an elected Senate. Uh, I don't know what the point of it would be. Uh, and I do know that to have this uh, sort of uh, indirectly elected uh, Senate, elected and then the Prime Minister can decide whether or not he's going to accept the results of the election, uh, weird as it is, it would uh, and, uh, require a constitutional amendment uh, uh, and with all the provinces and, well, and, and the, uh, the approval of the provinces. Uh, so I'm not a big fan. We can talk about it. I think it would make matters probably worse rather than better. Uh, the other is electoral reform, and I am a huge supporter. Uh, Larry Bud's there and, and his very vote Canada, which some of you may belong to, and I certainly do. I've done a, a, a terrific service to Canadians in educating us about it and advocating it. Uh, their particular favorite model is also mine mixed member proportional, but there are other systems that, that certainly deserve a hearing. It's a terrific idea. I will continue to work on it, but I'm a realist. Uh, the Liberals and Conservatives, as I hear them and listen to them, they just seem to have too much, uh, they think they have too much to lose by moving from first past the post. And until we convince some more Liberal as a Conservatives, or, or have other parties, larger parties, <laughs> and that may not happen in my lifetime. It's going to be very difficult at the federal level. Uh, for your group, uh, I think the, the work on public, ed public education that you're involved in is, is just uh, terrific. Uh, I, uh, I very much uh, encourage you to, uh, to focus on parliamentary democracy. I have to say that because a lot of people uh, take their cues from American politics. I am not a critic of uh, the checks and balances, the, the directly elected president checked and balanced by Congress. We watched it. We agonized over it uh, in the last few weeks uh, with Obama. I think it's a marvelous system, but it's not ours. Uh, ours is the parliamentary system. We should know, and I don't think we're going to change from that. Uh, and we should, we should study other parliamentary countries other than the United States, even other than the United Kingdom. We should, we should look at how the German and the Spain, Spanish and the Dutch and New Zealand, how they want their dysfunctional, oh, they're sorry, their functional uh, minority parliament. We, uh, we, we, should, we, we should take the time in your educational work uh, to study other parliamentary systems. I think we Canadians have a lot to learn. We're one of the oldest parliamentary uh, democracies in the world. We've coasted. We've just coasted. Because we think, oh, we know parliamentary democracy. Oh, hell yeah. We've had it since the 1840s, the late 1820s. Oh, but we, I don't think, know much about it anymore. I find my own ethnic group, who are British uh, uh, descendants and with university ed education, as, uh, now you think they know something. Most of my friends know very, very little about parliamentary democracy. They often ask me, uh, how it differs uh, from the American system. They went to the University of Toronto. Uh, they know uh, constitutional conventions. They, they, they can hardly, I mean, they, they do sound ghostly things and they change the subject if I ever bring them up. Uh, so uh, it isn't just that we've got a lot of people who haven't got a British background, even those who have uh, know very, very little. So I, uh, I, I, I really, my hat's off to you to work on this, and uh, I, I wish you every success.